Thank you and welcome to the future, if I can say that. Uh, we will explore um, in a few moments what can be the monitoring for the next decade, of course. It's the title of this conference. But um, the prediction I will make, if I can say that, predictions, will, will be not to be taken too seriously. They are balanced with good ideas, trends, uh, software we can already touch, we can already use them. So it will always balance between a prediction, what I call a prediction for the next decade, and tools already there for doing so, and trends, things like that. Uh, a word about me, but he told you everything you know about me, except the poor English accent, it's my specialty. Uh, I'm working in charge of research and development at a French uh, open source company. Uh, I'm an open source monitor solution architect before, and uh, you know the two first points already. So, what we will see, I've taken a crystal ball to imagine the future, and uh, I call that a road trip experience, because I, I, I like those words, I think they are cool, and uh, it's a, a road trip experience between a prediction about what you may need in the next decade, to be the king of monitoring, of course, and the nowadays trends, good ideas, and tools you can find in the open source monitoring community. It's always a prediction and the tools, the good ideas, the trends. We have eight points to see. First one, I'm sure in the next decade you will need big distributed architecture. You may ask why, and I say because. That's all. No, you, you will need it because uh, today's the standard, the norm, is pulling at a five minute interval on monitoring. Maybe tomorrow, because business is more and more critical, we will need to uh, pull at a one minute interval. That's a uh, big step uh, further, because if you are, um, for example, 100,000 hosts to pull every five minutes, that's only 20,000 services or hosts to pull in one minute. Nowadays, a lot of people have already more than 20,000 services in an Agios or Isinga project. So you may want to monitor the world internet, why not? And you finally realize that NDO doesn't scale well. So let's see the tools you can uh, use right for now for doing big setup. Uh, when I speak about big setup, I speak about uh, 1, 100,000 checks every five minutes. It's for me the start of the big setup. Uh, you did already have some words about Mod Gearman this morning. Uh, so this is one of the three projects I will talk about for doing big setup architecture, big setup, big distributed setup. Um, Mod Gearman is a NIM module for Nagios or for Isinga as well. And so it's loaded right in the Nagios memory. So it's quick, it's easy. And um, all the checks that's actually done by Negios itself. You know, it forks, it makes a check, it gets the results. That's a lot of loads on the Negios servers. You will get uh, push this load on German worker. Negios will just have to ask to a German server, or more than one German server, if you need big, 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 big scale. Negios will just have to, uh, to ask do this check, do this check, do this check. And the German server will pass the demand to a worker. What is nice with this setup is that on your worker, you don't need any more Negios, like in the traditional setup, distributed setup. You don't need no more Negios. You just have plugins on your worker. So everything you paste in Negios can be passed to German server. It's for the host check, it's for the service check, event handler, and get back check results. 
is the first one. Uh, what is nice with more German compared to DNX, DNX is that you can uh, precisely uh, tell Negios to put these checks on this worker. You, you do that with um, host group on service group. Okay? Uh, you can complete this setup with live statue and multi seed for the interface. And you have a big setup distributed already with that. The second one is the brand new one, so I, I won't tell you much about it, and the Isinga team will do more, uh, I suppose. It's uh, Isinga MQ, it's something quite similar in, in things with, um, uh, with Mojiman. It's based on a message bus. Uh, this is the thing for me, in my point of view, that's interesting. You will see later why I, I, I find this interesting. Um, putting Isinga MQ with Isinga or Nagios makes you don't need any more DNX or more German. It's quite the same and it's a really young project, so I don't have much info to tell you about it, but I would like anyway to, to give it. And the next one is um, a bit apart all of Nagios. Uh, but it's also really interesting in a big setup environment because um, Shinken has started as a proof of concept for this. It was to show the limits of Negios in big distributed environment. It's written in Python and it's uh, Negios configuration files compatible. That's why it is here. What is nice uh, with uh, Shinken, that's he has the distributed things inside. So you don't have to um, get add-on or get something exterior to it. It's already in it. It's based on distribution. And maybe this is a bit tough to, to, to see, but the principle is to have all the functionality of Negios demonized with two demons each time, one demon that makes the job, and a spare demon that can do the job if the first one fails. So you have high availability, you have load balancing right out of the box with Shinken. And you can also l use Live Statue, it's a version for Shinken, and you can use the Shinken UE or you can choose to use any Negios interface. So I think Shinken has also its place in this uh, big distributed environment. The functions are arbiter for cutting the configuration, and you, you have all the functionalities of Negios, the broker functionality, the reactioner, notification, and so on. You have the polar, and you have the scheduler. The big functionalities are all demonized. That's the good point with Shinken, I think. This was the first prediction, easy. The second one, is uh, something I believe you will need it if you don't already now. It's end user experience. You know, for f nowadays, for time, we are making mostly technical monitoring. We are going under the, under the, under the server, checking DNS, checking HTTP, checking low-level services, file system, and so on. End user experience take the monitoring by the other side. It puts your Negios in the seat of your customer or clients or user. And with one check, you will have to, uh, you will have to see if all your services needed for the application are working from the user point of view. In fact, you want to know quickly if that service delivered to the user just works. With one check, you know that, with end-user experience. You, you need also end-user experience because you can put a monitoring agent on Google Mail. If your company uses Google Mail, you can monitor it as you monitor your own servers. You can put a monitoring agent. You can ask, you can ask. You know that the sum of the parts monitor is not equal to the world. 
I love this sentence. It's quite uh, its future. I explain this one. It needs some explanation. Uh, when I tell you, you know that the sum of the parts monitored is not equal to the whole. I mean that you can check your DNS. They are OK. Negios tell you availability of your DNS is OK. You check your HTTP, it's OK. You check your operating system, file system, and so on, it's OK. You check your network, it's OK. And you have a user at the telephone who tells you it's not OK. It's not OK. I can't log in. Or I can, but it's about 15 seconds long for each screen. It just doesn't work for me. Well, it works for me. OK, so this is where you need also end user experience, because the sum of the part monitored is not equal to the whole. We have tools. We have new tools. There were, uh, there were some tools uh, before, and Selenium is the most known. There are now some new tools for doing so. And uh, this is a couple of things. Cucumber and uh, water. Um, it's what people call behavior-driven monitoring. You don't, you don't have to know, you don't have to see, you don't want to see if technically your application is ready. You want to test what you attend, what you want from your application. You test the behavior of your application. Can I log in? Can I put something in my basket on an e-commerce site? That's things like that. We check functionalities. We don't check resources. We check functionalities. Is it work? Can I put? OK, I already told that. It completes. It doesn't run plates. For me, it completes the technical checks. You need both. You need the underlying resources you use for an application to be available to your user. So with both, you have the best, I think. So here, you're really from the end user response view. That's what you want to see. Let's describe a, a, little, bo a little bit more in detail um, the software we can use. Here is a collector or polar for an Agios. And this polar, we put a plugin, Cucumber and Agios, that um, format the output of a Cucumber scenario in uh, the Negios traditional format. You have Cucumber critical, so one step critical in my scenario, no warning, one OK, and you will also get the perf data. So really nice. What is nice with Cucumber on Vatia, is, Vatia is that it works on any um, platform. You can put those software on Linux, of course, on Mac, but also on Windows. It's, um, Ruby. It's in Ruby. Uh, Cucumber, as you talk about. Cucumber, I will talk a little more after. That here is the, uh, what is nice before. It's between the Negios plugin and that here, you have Cucumber, which is a, an abstraction layer. I will give you some words about it. The real checking, the real uh, web browser, you have five web browsers recognized by this technology, um, they are driven by those two parts. WebDriver is nice because it's also used by the Selenium project in its second version. So we have um, a layer here is to abstract what we write here. Here we write, click on that, um, click on that, uh, fill, fill this form. We write actions in there. Here is the abstraction layer that gives you the possibility to write an action for any browser available to the solution. A few words about Cucumber scenario. Cucumber is an abstraction layer between application manager and technician. You know, all, often in the company, there are system administra um, administrators, manager, who know well the, technician, the technical side of the business. But um, you have also application managers that are not really um, 
they, they know what I mean. They are not really technical, if I can say that. They are not really uh, easy with techniques. So you, they, they talk business. They talk uh, functionality. If you have an e-commerce site, what is important for the application manager is that people can make some um, buy, some buy on your website. For you, it's the, le the low level will interest you. So Cucumber is really nice, interesting, because you can give um, the description, the behavior to the application manager, the man who knows what he wants for the business point of view. You can give it, OK, tell me what you want uh, to have some checks for knowing that your application is OK. It's based on the expected behavior of the application, and you write in your native language. And I follow that, but uh, in English, a uh, French example, of course. And you write really things like that. If I'm on the Google page and I fill the uh, ACE form, the Q form, then when I click on the search, I should see something. When I do that, I do that. I should see, I should have that. You see, always this balance. When I do something, when I'm here and I make that, I should have this response. This is the expected behavior. It's really interesting because you, you can really pass the uh, scenario uh, writing to application manager. Uh, Besides, if something wrong, you can tell, hey, it's him who tell me that it was that. Third prediction, aggregation and correlation. Why you may need that in the next decade? Uh, first one, you don't want to fill mailboxes with notification. It's always, uh, when you have big trouble, big storm on your network, you can really fill mailboxes with notification. You don't want that. You don't want that. You want align align alignment between technical and business monitoring. What we have seen just before with end user experience is what I call a business monitoring. You are on the high level of the application. You are in the user seat. And we do traditional technical monitoring, you want aggregation or correlation to align those two technologies, those two um, kind of monitoring. And, and last, you want to find root cause problem where problems arise and have also an impact analysis to business people to know if something here fail in my network it impact the e-commerce site, for example. So you want to know that. It's not really easy in Nagios interface because all is flat. A uh, router, a network router, is on the same level that an application. It's not the truth. Application is just on the top. A network router is just on the bottom. You need both, but... So you will need that, I'm sure. Uh, we have tools, we have ideas, we have trends nowadays in some tools that uh, show the road for doing so, for going a step further. We have the traditional now, it's kind of traditional, Nexios business process add-on, um, that it permits you to put uh, and or correlation between services and host. So when you have a cluster, you can tell with such a tools, you can tell I need two of the three of my HTTP servers to give the services to the user. The first one, so Negios, business process add-on, and there are two new um, interfaces or um, software for doing so. They are, I think, based on the, the, the same functionalities. You have um, Multisit, with it, with, uh, which is a part of CheckMK. Uh, Multisit, this is this part of the screen, has the tools for that. You know, when you have a critical, you can see, you can go down deeper
to see where's the problem. Uh, not, not critical, sorry. Okay, you can see all the services that compose your upper services, if I can say that. Shinken, one more time, and have really a uh, good idea, I think, with uh, something quite new. We have really traditional in monitoring interface for now, with host on the left side and services on the right side. Uh, Shinken gives a new fresh approach to this, I think, because you don't have no more those two things. You have a really a business view. You have all your application level at the left, the upper side, uh, what we can check with end user experience plugin, for example. So you can have a, an ERP, you can have a, an e-commerce site. It's really business oriented. And when you have a problem, like here on the ERP, you can click on the ERP to see what, are the pro what is the main problem of this application on what impact it has on the services and the resources you use. It's really uh, something new. It's really something uh, we must have in the next decade, I think. This is the traditional Nexus business process add-on. Four, we need better charts. Definitely, we need better graph. Because uh, ARD graph generated are not so easy to read. You I don't like that. You, we want real value. When, when you point uh, a graph, you, you want to have the real value uh, your pointer is on. You don't want to, OK, you see what I mean? You want to choose the period you render. Uh, it's not static. It's not something like that. You want to look at that. What do you prefer? This representation, all those two, they are not specially uh, monitoring base, as you can see, Tokyo, Tokyo Climate or USD to Euro is not really what we do every day. But here you have a PNG. If you are JavaScript, the um, good things with that, the library used is iCharts. Good things with that is that, as you can see, there's a timeline. You go to the past and you put the left and the right side of the period you want to see. When you, you have Zoom, already predefined, but you can also have a user-defined Zoom. That's something interesting, I find. And when you put your mouse on one of those points, you have real value of what this point represents. So I think we need really that for having more um, value with perf data and performance data. So, uh, we have hand user experience, we have technical, we have a lot of data that coming. We want dashboards or maps because we want to mix events like syslog events. We want performance, we want high availability data. We want to mix them on a screen, not having a console or an interface for availability, having a performance for, abil uh, for uh, an interface, sorry, for performance. We want to mix that on a one screen. You know, you have your application, you see all that. We want top view that lead to detail view. We go from, like uh, I show you in the Shinken UE, we want to go from the top, see if our application is doing well. If so, we can take the coffee. If it doesn't, we must dig deeper down to see the root cause analysis and the impact view. It's really a global to detail approach. And you want big screen in your data center because big screens uh, are just uh, amazing. They, they make you feel uh, professional, <laughs> serious, at least for your direction, big screen. Yeah, they work. Mm. Okay, we have tools already for that. We have tools, NECVIS is uh, certainly the best because it's the unique, I think. <laughs> you can put icons, you can put things, you can put uh, monitoring points that can represent a service or host or a host group or a service group. That's really a good foundation. That's really a good base for 
maybe a little more. Uh, here again, Shinken, because again, a nice, a nice try, I say, maybe more than a try. Uh, when you have the, the previous view I show you in uh, Shinken, can be completed by this graph, dynamically generated, where you have the root cause and the impact on your network. That's also a direction that I find really interesting, really nice. That leads to, uh, you know, things like that. What, what is a mail application, after all? It's certainly SMTP, POP3, yeah, IMAP, and when you go down, you have an availability monitoring, performance monitoring, and you have the checks. So we should be able to represent those hierarchy, those three, in a, an interface, I think. That could be something like that. This is a mix I've done. I'm not a great graphist, as you can see. Uh, we have on the list what people, serious people, K, uh, call K-performance indicator. Uh, that's just the gauge that gives you if your uh, services are available, rendered in a good or not so good top topology, network topology, system, application topology. In this single pan, you have all the relationships between the resources that compose the service you present to your user. The traditional view <laughs> and the event tray. Even tray is interesting in an interface because you can see as a error it says feed, something like that, for all events occurring in the monitoring area. You have here a sort of uh, a feed, a feed. I think with a mixed view like that, you have all. Maybe it, it you, you, you will have some performance data here. You will have the traditional view, events and links between your source, you have the global view of anything you want. This view can be an application view, but it's, uh, it's also possible that this view is a either host view or a service view. It's up to your mind. Number six, deliver reports in minutes, not days. Why? because it's boring, it's not what you prefer, it's not what I prefer, delivering reports. And today's tools are just time consuming to prepare monitoring reports, because we are on the low level side. You, you, we used Jasper reports or BERT, and it's really time consuming to, to make reports. When people know what they want to report. So, a uh, thing is absolutely sure, I think, in the next decade, everyone needs SLA, Service Level Agreement Reports. So we must have that ready in your solution, and we must, we, we, we want to, uh, based on this SLA report, we want to click, quickly choose the period and the scope on which you have to report. You can report on an application, I think this is the best, because uh, you you judge availability to the user point of view, not your technical point of view. And this is what we call SLA. Don't forget that when there are SLA, there are also money in the, in the thing. So we want that. Unfortunately, there's no so much initiative right now for that. The one I've I, I found is the Isinga. Um, Jasper report integration, with this a step uh, ahead to something um, quicker and easier to do. Because you have just to select a type of report, the period you want, the scope, and it push all the data and all that what you want to the Jasper's report server. So it's a good step ahead, but I think there's, um, there are really uh, more improvement to do in reporting. The seven is uh, maybe uh, one of my favorite. Um, real log management. What I mean with that is uh, pulling at five minute interval with a check log will be maybe a bit old school. This is a prediction after all. Uh, you catch too much boring events, 
You missed the interesting one? Nah, no good. And you know the truth is in the log. So we have um, two new tools in the open source area now for making real log management. Before it was a bit uh, with old school tools, uh, okay, don't name it. Uh, now we have a tandem, <laughs> um, which is Logstash and uh, Greylog2. Logstash is really interesting for pre-processing your logs file. It has in input what you want, server, router, bullshit appliance. <laughs> really important. This is all the, always the bullshit appliance with Max Porter. It can transport that with the classical syslog protocol, but also with IMQP. Remember, uh, I told you about the zero MQ approach of Isinga in the core or in the name module. Um, here again, we have a bus message. MQP is a standard for advanced, advanced messaging queue protocol. And it's a standard, and uh, it's really interesting because you have um, another a new transport that complements that complements the syslog transport. You send your log to logstash node. You can have as many as you need. In the logstash node, you will make uh, data manipulation, um, date formatting, for example. You know the classic Nagios log are with epoch time. It's not really easy to read for a human like me, at least. Uh, so you can do all those manipulations, transforming an epoch time in something more readable for human. You have really good power here to um, malax <laughs> your, your logs, your line. And what is interesting also, say in output, we have the possibility to give Nagios alerts. We have also the possibility to stock events in a um, sort of database, which is called uh, Elasticsearch, which is something really interesting because it's fast. It can be queried in a number of ways, so really interesting. The last output that it's not here, it's an output that can be used for sending uh, what you have prepared, what you have pre-processed, to a Greylog2 server. Uh, Greylog2 is a server and it's also a, it's a daemon, oh, sorry, it's an interface, two parts, a daemon and an interface. Um, it's a software that uh, is going to be close to the one version. So I've, I have in test uh, for now six months and really, 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 it gives you more power to uh, once again, filter your log, find what is interesting for you and what it's not. And it's, it has um, two features for that we are really interesting, in my opinion. It's what it calls streams. You can create streams about events that interest you, that interest other people in your company. That's the first thing. So here, at the start, you are all events centralized there. And when you click on the stream, you can have a focus on only the events that interest you. This is the first part. The second part interesting is that you have also a blacklist. So events that not interesting for you can be left, can be not stock, not, not store, not, not store. Um, what is Interesting also with Greylog2 that uh, it's a syslog based server, but it had also a new format got Gelf, Greylog Extended Log Format, that gives you much more flexibility on how to store um, events. It is also um, working with uh, Negios. You can send alerts from Greylog2 to a Negios instance, for example. So I call it log centralization and visual mining. And now, this is maybe uh, the most crazy prediction, but maybe, maybe, maybe we will need what we call hypervision. Nobody knows what it is, but 
high quality provision. Uh, you certainly answer yes to um, one of the previous predictions I've made. So you're ready for hypervision. It completes your existing monitoring solution and sits on top of them. I will give you, and you want to enlarge your monitoring. We are developing, uh, we have started to develop uh, software we call Canopsis in my company, which is now for the moment a proof of concept, more developer release or technology preview uh, that we give you and we want to have some feedback. Of course, it's open source, free software. There's no check in Canopsis. It's events, all is events. And that's why we base all the architecture. I will describe a little further on the slide after. We base that on a message bus, once again. AMQ with RabbitMQ. RabbitMQ is the name of the software we use for doing MQP-based message protocol. Um, what is really interesting in MQP is that you can send a message to a particular destination, but you also have some publisher subscriber mode. So you publish events on a queue, and the parts of the solution who can be interested in by those type of events can subscribe to the, um, to the queue. It connects, it connects to your existing solution. It doesn't replace them, of course. It should render, <laughs> because it's not implemented for now, it should render dashboard and reports you can build from libraries. You build libraries, and after you quickly choose performance data, events data, and create a dashboard like I show you in my mixer view. And the next part of this software is Engine. Engine um, is the best word to, um, to things we have in mind for aggregation, aggregation of different kind of data. Performance data, events data, availability data are not quite the same. They have to be, uh, they have to be used in a different manner. Um, we want also business rules. Why not? Business rules. You put your checks, your um, the, you put trends based on business rule. I, I will tell you after. And inventory. Why not? We we want to be um, like end user monitoring. We want to be this uh, the top of your monitoring solution because in most company you don't have only an Agios. You have an Agios, you have a log management system, eventually, you have a specialization, a specialized <laughs> console for hardware, so, so on. So maybe we need something on the top of that to aggregate, correlate, etc., etc. Where we, uh, This is a young project, and uh, just I told you before, it's rather a proof of concept. I don't know. We don't know if we need that in the next decade. We think we need, but uh, maybe you don't. <laughs> uh, four parts, really. Input parts, uh, it's just a connector from all, 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 all you want to IMQP. It's really simple to write a connector for Neos already written, Shinken, nearly written. Uh, Isinga is already written also. This is a name module that put all events, all data from Negios to a name QP bus. From this, from there, you can put also data from a CMDB or from an inventory. You can put data from a monitoring in the software as a service, you know, for cloud monitoring or something like that. You have things um, monitored on the exterior of your company, you want to retrieve data from that. This is what I call monitoring in a software as a service mode. The central part, so I tell you before, is the uh, MQP bus. We have um, storage. We have started for uh, now with uh, Mongu, MongoDB, which is a NoSQL database. Why? Because we 
don't want to fight with a relational schema, relational database for the moment. But as all the rest, it's just a connector between a storage engine and the MQP bus. On the other side, the intelligence of the software, if I can say that, engines. We have seen for, we, we, we have in mind correlation, just like we found in a Negios business process item, things like that, maybe more and more uh, things. A notifier to notify on the application on the tap level side to just send a message that aggregates all the problem and not 100 message with no links between them. We want business rule. Uh, business rules, you know, uh, we, we don't manage flat systems. When you work for a company that sells goods on the internet, uh, at Christmas time, there's a peak. This is a business rule. We should manage those kind, those cases in our monitoring solution. It's not about uh, my server is uh, at 80% on load every, every time of the year, but in the five days of Christmas, if you have a problem on your e-commerce site, you lose much more money than in February or March. This is what I call business rules. You, you see? Woof. Reporting, of course. I told you before. Uh, here is a... We, we, we so, will it be possible to correlate events based on service data in the CMDB? We hope. So, we hope. We we hope. This is one of, goal, one of the goals. Do you want goal. to repeat the question, please? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I prefer that you ask. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is it, oh, will it be possible to correlate events based on service data in the CMDB? This is one of the goals. This is one of the goals, clearly, clearly. Correlation is clearly one of the major aspects of the solution. If we don't have that, we have no real value. So if we have a new software, we must have value or it doesn't make sense. We have uh, built an API, um, which, uh, which is a uh, REST type. So this API, we built interfaces on the top. Uh, when I say we build, we are going to build. <laughs> this, this is ready. We have already packaged all this architecture, and you will download it on the Canopsis. Org, which is a minimalistic website for now, because the project is real young. But uh, if you don't like what we will do in our interfaces, you see exploitation, administration, and reporting interfaces for building and for viewing. Uh, if you don't like them, you will be able, based on the same API, to uh, build your own interfaces. And if you don't want to build interfaces, you can plug with your Extract Transform Learn system or your business integration system. It's up to you. Um, I think we have posed the foundation for something that can be interesting for the monitoring community. It's up to you now to uh, tell us if it has something interesting, give us ideas, of course, and give us feedback on what has already been done. All information about that, minimalistic form of the moment, uh, are on the website canopsis.org. For finishing without them, yep. <laughs> it's in the future. Okay, um, I have one question. If you try to um, take your application on top of different monitoring system, um, your application must be able to um, work with range uh, with a high range of dynamic um, checks. Yeah, if you um, have a monitoring team of five men and they always doing checks, removing checks, um, your application will have to need some kind of sync or something where you have not the manpower to synchronize the on the top application with the lower level monitoring system. How we will solve this? Do you have any idea for this? We have ideas, but uh, 
clearly we need feedback about that from the community <laughs> because uh, <laughs> engines are really uh, a stuff um, difficult to do but what you tell is also something really difficult that's why we are basing our architecture on a IMQP bus because it's scalable you can eat million events that are in such a message buses after all we can uh, be dynamic completely di dynamic is uh, whew, something really edge that's why uh, <laughs> we put here a cmdb or maybe we will plug via uh, with a collector on a glpi or fusion inventory agent maybe to have both side what you have a referential and what you see and correlate about that but really it's a uh, work in progress so uh, I, 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 in, I, I invite you to post that on the, on the mailing list things like that it's really nice to to have a reflection about that and to finish without them I'm nothing <laughs> uh, my friends um, in the monitoring affair dot hog uh, they give me a lot of ideas they show me some points that were interesting for this presentation uh, you will see Jean Gabès tomorrow presenting his, uh, his son, Schinken. <laughs> and, uh, of course, the company for I work, because uh, they engage me for, uh, for just what I present you, uh, trying to imagine what we need uh, on a daily basics to, have to achieve better monitoring, ways for organizing such event. And, of course, thanks for your attention. And question, what else? Thank you. Are there more questions on, on that? Or maybe some something is missing? Maybe someone have had a vision that it will... Uh, we have a man with a vision. <laughs> 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 Uh, I know, I just um, wanted to ask, you have told about uh, Mod Gearman for distributing um, different load on different servers. Um, what's about Merlin? You didn't mention about? it. Merlin. Do they didn't know you? Merlin is... Uh, ah, Merlin. Merlin, oh. yeah. I was far away from that. Um, for the moment, Merlin just doesn't scale very well because it's Perl based uh, and maybe the next version will be uh, better but um, when you have a lot of performance data it's, it's, it's a good program, it's a good software but uh, um, in, some I've uh, in some setup I've made in the past uh, it, it was, uh, it was, it was, it does, it didn't fit, it didn't fit because I think of this architecture of on the language use Perl, which is maybe not the faster of the world, no, no. But it's really interesting, meaning uh, for the templates, he has really nice graph, really nice chart. Maybe uh, one of the best today available. You have collect D also, if you want to really make a performance collection. Collect D is also a nice project. So maybe I want to, to mention one thing. You said that it's uh, maybe necessary to to monitoring more often than uh, in an interval of five minutes. I'm I'm in doubt of that because <laughs> I think no one is is able to to react that fast. M maybe a minute will be fine, but at, at the end of the line, uh, a human being is is there, and if the human being is on the loo or maybe some somewhere, yeah. Um it's just prediction. Maybe I'm wrong. Certainly for some, I'm wrong. Certainly for some of them, I will be in the truth. Uh, I think one, one minute interval monitoring can be really interesting in end user experience monitoring. Because every minute, you will check if your e-commerce website is OK and people can uh, pass command on it. And I think uh, five minutes um, loss of business on that kind of application can be a huge uh, money disaster sometimes. 
I've worked for uh, 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 LAFNAC, you know that, I don't know. It's a big uh, distribution company in France, where um, at Christmas time, they had a 24 um, downtime on their website that cost them 2 million euro, 24 hours down, just. So this is why I think we could need a one minute polling interval, but maybe not for all. Yeah, may maybe I think this is a, a kind of high availability request, but, but maybe not a monitoring request. But maybe, maybe, that maybe, maybe. That's, that's just my humble opinion. So if there are no more questions, I will, oh yeah, one more question, maybe after that, one, one more then. Yeah, yeah, hello. Um, I would like to know if you see um, uh, something monitoring that um, is a little bit more um, uh, intelligent um, for itself. So uh, my point, um, if you are uh, monitoring on, on, um, um, on static thresholds, like um, uh, how do you, uh, you told us, like learning thresholds, like rising thresholds, uh, just getting full, or uh, once, once a week I make a backup and the load is higher than, than, um, than is, is higher on Friday than on, on, on Thursday. Do you see um, uh, projects moving in that way? Um, I saw that uh, HP OpenView d does some things like that uh, we're really on the, on the low level, but I think that uh, some point you have to do in, in, in the application or do in, in the monitoring projects because um, it's really hard if you get so much, uh, um, um, so much information just um, to handle it because um, um, sometimes 90% or 80% is just uh, um, um, for example, a disk full is 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 not uh, uh, very interesting if it, it needs another five minutes to get hundred percent. So, um, uh, do you see um, something uh, uh, going in this direction? Uh, well, the proposition, the prediction I've made, are mostly based on uh, what client customer ask in the monitoring area, and nowadays I think it's clear. Um, the traditional public of monitoring was technical public. But now, um, most of the application manager ask also some availability data also. And we must find a way to have those um, two publics for the monitoring to go on a solution that can uh, achieve goals for both of them. That's a main point. That's the difficulty for that because uh, I agree, uh, you need to know once if your disk is full. If you don't do anything to replace it or to shrink some file, well, what's interesting is to know every five minutes or every minute that your disk is full. I know it, okay. I don't want to do something for now. This is maybe, even Trey is maybe a part of the response for such a things. But they are really, so much things to do. So. Sorry, me again. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one final question, and then I'll no silence. Um, what do you think about? Um, I, th I think the technical monitoring is something which can be more automated. Yeah. So, you, for example, you have a scanner which scans your network. You're turning on a computer with a HTTP or uh, a DNS server or something, and I think. The next step will be that our monitoring will realize, oh, there's no system, I scan the system, I found the services, I um, take the system into something, uh, some kind of default group and uh, write in the configuration file so I don't have to care to en enable monitoring for this device. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That was something, I don't know why no one is working on such a thing that I know. People are working on that. People are working on that. Um, it's. Um it's been, uh, we had a dis discussion last night around that, around the, the good balance between what do you discover in an automatic fashion and what you really need to monitor. It's, you have some time a gap between those two. You discover too much things for what you need to monitor sometimes. So there's a balance, uh, I think, to find between the two. But People are thinking about that. Now, with virtualization, when you put a server on production, you put also the monitoring layer with it. 
it's, it's also in the cloud computing. When you, when you put an instance on live, on live, you also put the monitoring. Things are getting much and more automatic because we manage more and more servers. So I, I believe it, it's a way also. It could be the nine points. Yeah, it could be the nine points. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm the Kekta guy, so I'm the bad one. <laughs> um, to answer your question, yes, uh, we do some uh, effort in this way to uh, reach more automation, but you have to define some, some relations first. Uh, we can talk about this later on. And the answer to, to the guy talking about baselining, we did the so as well in our company, and it's possible with, with a, a Kekta plugin, but uh, you won't be happy with it. Uh, we can do uh, talk about <laughs> it uh, uh, later on uh, because there are so many deviations on the calendar that you won't be happy to be informed that last week on Tuesday we had a holiday <laughs> and your baseline went below a threshold where you assume that your web server is down because there's so less so, so few traffic uh, so uh, I'm, I'm quite sure you you won't be happy with with too much baselining, let's let's go this way. But I invite you to to, to talk about this in the, in the break during break.